it gives us a little bit more starting in verse 7 about that warfare that takes place in heaven. And of course, now it spells out who that dragon is. It's, it's the devil. It's Lucifer. It is, as the Hebrew says, Hasatan. We, we call him Satan, which basically means that he is the, 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 the accuser, uh, the one that causes trouble for God's people. And he deceives the whole world. It tells us he was cast to the earth and his angels with him. Satan and his fallen angels are very active and alive in our earth today. You only have to open your eyes to see it. But demons are real. Angels are real. Uh, it's not something that's a mental health issue. The evil that goes on in the world is not... It's primarily because of sin in men's hearts. But Satan and his demons twist and manipulate and, and set forward things for man in his sinful lust to pursue to, to help him try and wage war against God's people. They're very real. And, and some people have had uh, the occasion to actually encounter demonic entities and deal with them in, in, in a real personal way and, and know that they're real. Uh, and some people have been blessed enough to have uh, encountered angelic beings as well. Um, but then the scripture goes on, and much like what we saw in chapter 11 where the, the 24 elders cry out, this is the kingdoms of the earth are now the kingdoms of Jesus Christ. And I told you how that it didn't seem that way because the devil and the Antichrist were very much in charge and active. But it's so true that you can go ahead and say it as if it's really the case now because it is really the case now because it is that sure. Uh, here again, a loud voice in heaven saying, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. It's so sure that you could say it already is. Now salvation has come to man through the Lord Jesus Christ, but that accuser, he's still active in the world. He's still resisting God's people. But his defeat is so sure, so guaranteed, that we can go ahead and declare it as being already true. And when we live in that perspective, it makes the troubles and trials and struggles of this life a little easier to deal with. And, and, and even when they do seem to overwhelm us for a time, if we can go back to this, this faith and this truth and get back on track. Uh, real quick, we'll, we'll move through the, the uh, rest of the story, and then if we need to go back into it in more detail next week, we, we can. Um, but in verse 13, now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Ever wonder why the entire world seems to hate the Jewish people and the nation of Israel? It's right there for you. It's because God chose Israel for a certain purpose, uh, the most significant of which was to bring Messiah to the world. And Satan in his war against God, even though he hates all of mankind, he especially hates Israel because of God choosing to work with Israel in, the, in special ways and, in a, and for this specific purpose. And, and, and so he causes people to especially hate Israel. He wants to destroy them, yet it always seems like God's looking out for her, you know? Even when she gets uh, invaded and, and taken over and her people scattered, God, what does he do? He brings them back and, and the nation of Israel comes to be again in 1948. Over and over and over again, Satan tries to destroy them. God preserves them. Preserves them and makes them even greater than they were. 
And I want to point out just this uh, a couple of things real quick, and then we'll, we'll, we'll be done. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. This is another one of those passages in which you can see historical fulfillment, but you can look forward to a prophetic fulfillment. Uh, there have been times when uh, the Lord sent his protection or sent his provision uh, to Israel. Perhaps one of the greatest that would come to our minds, uh, I mean, when you think of an eagle, what do you think of? Strength, speed, a swiftness, majesty, America, you know, our national symbol, the great eagle. Uh, one of the greatest allies, especially in modern history, especially since the rebirth of Israel, uh, to, the, to Israel is the United States. Uh, wings of a great eagle. So we could see historical fulfillment. And, and there's ways that, you know, uh, you could say God sent, preserved, or protected Israel on wings of a great eagle in the past, but that's the one that, you know, should probably stand out to us the most, being U.S. citizens, you know, America the great, our great bald eagle, and uh, that we preserved her, we protected her, we've been a great friend to her, you know, we recognized her at her rebirth. Uh, unfortunately, we seem to be getting away from that alliance with Israel, that, that respect for Israel, that friendship with Israel, uh, and if we do each time we slight Israel, there's going to be little warnings and little chastisements until God finally says, okay, you've slighted her enough. And if we reach that point, we will be severely punished. But this is also going to be fulfilled going forward because God, through his divine protection, is going to preserve and protect his chosen people in the future as if they are on the wings of a great eagle. You know, the scripture talks about, you know, those that trust in the Lord, though they they run and they go, weary, you trust in the Lord and he will refresh you and you will mount up with wings as on an eagle. Um, so you can understand that uh, that picture there. Uh, and just the, the, the next thing we'll point out and like I said, if, if, if we need to go back into this next week for uh, due to time, we, we can. Uh, I may bring out some points even without you asking next week that I want to go back and touch. But, but these are just the big things I wanted to bring out today. So the serpent, you know, when, when Israel is being cared for and taken to our place in the wilderness to be nourished for a time, times and a half time, three and a half years, that's to be fulfilled. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a great flood. He was going to seek to drown the woman. We have seen this happen before in the history of the world. Those waters represent Gentile nations. Satan, this picture of the serpent spewing out the water like a great flood is a picture of Satan trying to use the Gentile nations to wipe out Israel. Uh, we've seen it time and time again. You know, I mentioned how you know Mary gave birth to the to Jesus Christ during the Roman occupation. You know, that was one of those Gentile nations, and eventually, you know, it, it causes trouble. But nonetheless, Israel is preserved by God. When she comes back to be uh, reborn in 1948, what did we see? But all these Gentile nations around her saying, we'll, we'll, we'll flood over her and, and drown her and push her into the sea and Israel will be no more. And I've, I gave you, if you'll go back and look through the videos, you'll recall 